South of the continent, an agricultural research organization says it's working on drought-tolerant varieties of maize to ensure Zimbabwe's staple crop withstands dry weather. The nonprofit group is working to develop the maize in a country where agriculture relies on rain-fed crops, even as droughts become more frequent. Columbus Mavunga reports from Harare. The International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center known by its Spanish acronym SIMIT says it is helping Zimbabwe become a self-sufficient agricultural producer after erratic rain seasons that have threatened food security. With an El Nino drought predicted in the 2018-2019 rain season, the non-profit group is hoping its technologies will help protect the livelihoods of small farmers. Here in Zimbabwe, three in five seasons are expected to be bad for farmers. And um, the El Nino um, actually is making that worse, right? So it's very important for us to develop uh, these maize varieties that are climate resistant because maize is the staple uh, food here in Zimbabwe, staple crop. In the 2015-2016 season, we tested um, our maize varieties all over Zimbabwe. Um, and they performed very well. They yielded close to double um, the yield of the commercial varieties that are on the market. So we believe that um, these varieties work. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization says drought tolerant maize is a key innovation in agriculture. CIMIT headquartered in Mexico estimates its new maize varieties increased profits in Zimbabwe by nearly $4 million in 2017. Researchers say the benefits are critical in a country listed by the Global Climate Risk Index as one of the most vulnerable to climate shocks. Zimbabwe's agricultural production has fallen since its controversial land reform program displaced experienced white commercial farmers and replaced them with black peasant farmers. But drought-tolerant maize alone isn't enough, say researchers. They urge Zimbabwean farmers to practice conservation agriculture. With uh, conservation agriculture, we're also looking at uh, minimizing the amount of runoff that comes out of the system. So that means improving on the amount of water that infiltrates in instead of running off to the rivers. So with conservation agriculture, we help to stop that uh, by ensuring that the water and the soil remain in place. But most irrigation systems in Zimbabwe need to be upgraded or repaired. This 59-year-old woman says she does not have an irrigation system for her corn but takes other measures. We collect dry leaves and crop stubble. Once our crops germinate, we start mulching to keep moisture in case of prolonged dry spells. Others are hit by the droughts, but our conservation agriculture is helping me for 12 years now. She hopes to have enough money to have an irrigation system one day. But with more droughts predicted, it may take even longer to save up enough money to install it. Columbus Mavunga for VOA News, Arare. Now, Tanzania is set to build a $3 billion hydroelectric plant in a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a contract announced on Wednesday involving Egyptian companies. The announcement comes despite concerns raised about the impact of the project on wildlife. Tanzanian President John Magufuli has pushed for the project to start despite concerns raised about the impact on the Selo Game Reserve. Known for its elephants, black rhinos and giraffes, the reserve covers 50,000 square kilometers and is one of the largest protected areas in Africa, according to UNESCO. The planned hydropower dam, which will more than double Tanzania's power generating capacity, puts protected areas of global importance as well as the livelihoods of over 200,000 people people who depend upon the environment at risk, according to the World Wildlife Fund Conservation Group report. Arab contractors will hold a 55% stake in the project, and the Egyptian power company El Sawid owns the remaining 45%.